uh, protocols like SMB or NFS or uh, different network related protocol like CAFS and so on. So let's talk about this Azure Files option. Okay, within storage account, yesterday we were seeing uh, multiple options were there, right? When you go and look at the storage account, we saw that uh, there is a um, container option which is used for storing blob and we have the file share option which can be used for creating file shares. So that is what we are going to discuss now. And this Azure files is a again a fully managed file share. So why we call it as fully managed file share see in, in an on premises if you want to have a file server or if you want to have a file share server you need to do a lot of things right you need to uh, uh, deploy a server you need to install operating system either windows or linux you have to kind of uh, uh, create the uh, file shares and then you have to manage it so you are responsible for server management os management in terms of patching um, making sure that it is having the latest update the latest patches vulnerabilities antivirus and so on so there is a lot of things that you need to make sure you are doing in your traditional uh, file server but here in the cloud these backend topics or the backend activities are fully managed by microsoft that's why we call it as fully managed file shares we can just directly go and create the files file share that is the first step uh, we are going to do so what what are the gen general use cases of file share in the on premises generally we go and create a file share and uh, we use it for uh, uh, sharing it up uh, across different people for example we'll create a departmental share we will create something like marketing and sales or finance or whatever and we will be sharing that particular content across the team members part of that particular department similarly we might actually go and create a home folder for each of the users and we might be storing the files related to individual uh, user or their profile will be stored in the home folder content here so and we can also use it for storing some common content for application or you can also store some executables for it related uh, data so you can use it for multiple purposes but the primary use case of file share it's for concurrent usage or it it's it's for uh, many to one mapping or it's for uh, accessing it from multiple uh, systems so file share by default its nature is concurrent mapping is possible okay and the important thing is when we are talking about azure files in the cloud in the azure cloud it can be concurrently accessed from the cloud systems the uh, the cloud vms it can be accessed from on prem or it can be accessed from your uh, desktop also your pc also okay so you can access it kind of uh, from uh, all three options like from your home from on premises from the cloud network so that's the biggest thing and here um, in in general this particular azure files are accessible by uh, the industry standard protocol there are a couple of industry standard protocol that are very commonly used if it is windows server then we generally use server message block okay this is the common uh, protocol that is used when you are going and accessing something through the network similarly if you are talking about linux it has got uh, network file system nfs so these are the most commonly used protocol even though there are a lot many but these are the most commonly used in windows and linux and uh, these are the two common industry standard protocols that uh, even azure file share will support so what you can do is you can go and create a file share and you can uh, access it from or you can mount it from your windows system or linux system or you can also access it from applications directly using the endpoint rest api i mean http endpoint or https endpoint so the idea is to have a file share created and mounted from multiple system and, and access the file storage simultaneously that is the general objective okay so if you if you want to have a data that needs to be accessed by a set of users or a set of computers or a set of application we can go and use this concept okay so let's go and create uh, uh, the file kind of file share option here okay let's go and open up the storage account let's go to file share and i'll create a file share here and okay so let's do one thing here when i go and create the file share you have to again uh, use the same nomenclature nomenclature it should be unique and uh, it should be uh, all small uh, small character i mean uh, lower case characters and so on so i can just give it a name i will say uh, sunday file share or i will say uh, okay so all these things are important right so 
so it should be only lower case and it should be um, you can have one you cannot have I mean the name cannot have can cannot contain two consecutive iphones okay it can be there can be one iphone but it cannot be more okay i'll say sunday iphone file share iphone zero one okay so here you have four categories or uh, four tiering of uh, the storage option okay so again yesterday we were talking about the tiering right so here also we have four tiering option you have got premium option which is always ssd we have got transaction optimized and sometimes premium also provides nvme ssd disk and we have got cool category and you have got uh, the last one uh, okay hot and cool right okay so it's the same like your uh, blob storage but we have one additional option which is transaction optimized okay so these are the four different tiers that are available if you look at the options we don't see the premium option here right just because we created the uh, storage you uh, as a kind of standard option if you go to the settings you will be able to find that okay when we created the storage account we created it as a standard performance uh, so that's what the name uh, stands here right so we created as a standard category so we cannot change it that's what i told you just be just a few seconds back so the setting cannot be changed after the storage account is created so while you are creating a new storage account you can go and create it and again if you are creating a storage account purpose built for some specific purpose like azure file share or something like that the best practice is to select the option at the beginning itself see for example if i want to create a storage account specifically for file share i can go and select the premium if, if i need premium category premium is always uh, super fast right it is uh, ssd and it provides you low latency and it, it gives you a uh, high throughput and uh, definitely if you get all such benefits cost is uh, high okay so let me go and uh, select this premium option and when i select the premium option you get the premium account categories and when, when i say the premium account categories the premium option gives you three different options. One of them is the file share. Okay, and we also can use it for page blobs and we can also use it for uh, uh, the uh, block blobs. So these are the three options that we can use. So I'm going to select the file share option here. So file share is mainly for sharing the files across different systems. So we can use it for uh, file shares, page blobs, and block blobs we cannot use it for append blob append blobs are mainly for uh, events and logs right so it does not need any kind of premium performance it can be uh, stored in a moderate uh, speed okay so here we are uh, i have selected the file share and i have selected the premium option so if you want to create a premium file share you have to select the premium performance and the file share premium account type and you can uh, go and uh, make some settings here so by default when you go and create your uh, storage account or any category by default the secure transfer for the rest api if you are accessing it from the application it is always secure transfer enabled by default okay you don't have to kind of uh, make any changes by default by default secure transfer is enabled for any rest api calls if you are accessing it from uh, the application directly or from http so what does this mean it means like only https is supported only ssl uh, is supported okay http plus ssl right or sometimes like it can be a uh, transport layer security also and with that said maybe i can also show you something here you can also downgrade if your application has some limitation that it supports only a tls version 1.0 or 1.0 one you can go and um, downgrade it but always recommended to go with latest uh, tls version transport layer security version which is 1.2 but you can downgrade it to you have options to downgrade it to 1.0 or 1.1 if your application has that requirement okay but it's always good to go to 1.2 okay i'll talk about the other uh, security options here but i want to show you one more thing so you can also enable the same soft delete option like we were discussing about this yesterday right for your file share you can also enable it for your uh, file share like your blob storage soft delete can be enabled and again the same category default is seven days and you can reduce it to one day up to uh, 365 days i'll just mute the line here okay so coming back i'll just uh, maybe change it to one day here okay 
So this is recycle bin. Yesterday we saw the demo, right? How to create a soft delete and how to get it sorted out. We all saw that yesterday. And by default, you can see that uh, the encryption is enabled. Okay, you can uh, use either uh, Microsoft managed keys. By default, all your storage account are encrypted using SSC, meaning it is called storage service encryption. And by default, it is encrypted using Microsoft managed keys. But if you want to get some keys from internet and if you want to use your own uh, um, keys, you can also do that. Okay, there are two options. Either you can have Microsoft managed keys or you can also go and purchase uh, keys from the internet and you can have your own keys for uh, protection. But Microsoft managed key is the default and it is also recommended. Okay, and if you look at here, the customer managed keys can be used for blobs and files only or you can also use it for all the services but after you create the account this option cannot be changed this is very very important right so uh, some people go and encrypt it and then uh, they try to change it after the creation it, it will not allow you to do that okay so you have two options to choose from if you are using customer managed keys you can go and use it for all the services or you can uh, use it for just your uh, blobs and files only. Many people use it for uh, uh, tables and queues for the application. So tables and queues are mainly for application, right? So they generally use it for that, but we can also use it for blobs and file also. Okay, let me go and um, create it. Okay, what it says, okay, I have not given any name. Okay, I'll say this is uh, uh, premium file share. Uh, premium file share local return and storage 001 just to make sure that I'm following the name I mean to understanding purpose right so premium I'm using it for file share and it is a local return and storage so you can just give some name that can help you to uh, identify it better right so let me get it created so if you want to create a premium file share this is the option that you need to follow and if you are creating it purpose built for uh, file share and uh, these activities you will not have options to play around with other storage type meaning it can it is actually intended for only hosting file shares so i'll show you that shortly so once after this is created you can see that but if you want to create a file share for uh, maybe hard tier or transaction optimized you can just go and uh, do it here okay so you can uh, do it within the standard itself so standard combination it supports these three different things okay so here these three categories are standard category. They are all uh, hard disk category. But if your application needs better transactions, uh, quicker transactions, you can also go and create transaction optimized. I'll go and select by default, it is transaction optimized. Okay, so uh, if you don't need premium level latency and if your application is looking for uh, some transaction heavy workload, you can also go for this. Okay, so by default, transaction optimized is the uh, default one and the maximum capacity that is supported is 5 TB byte. Okay, so 5 TB. Okay, so that is the maximum capacity. You can also go and enable large file shares. I'll tell you like how to change it to 100 terabyte capacity. You can also do that. Okay, you have the option to change the maximum capacity to uh, 100 terabytes also. But by default, you get 60 Mbps speed uh, with transaction optimized. Okay, I'll just say uh, I need a file share. This is like transaction optimized file share 01. Okay, I'll go and create it. So now, okay, so it is here. Let me show you some option. So if you scroll to the row, I mean bottom, extreme bottom, you can also go and enable large file share. If you need maximum capacity to be utilized, if you want to store like 100 terabytes, you can uh, use this, okay? So this large file share option can be enabled under the configuration settings. So this is to accommodate larger file shares for uh, if, if you have some application that needs uh, heavy storage you can also enable this option okay this supports up to uh, 100 terabyte by default you have a limit of 5 terabyte but if you want to increase it to the maximum you can also go and enable large file share okay so this is mainly for big data and uh, data warehousing so for such data lake and uh, such large data management stuff you can go and enable this okay you can go to the configuration settings and you can enable large file share.
okay this is to uh, uh, increase the limit from 5 terabyte to 100 terabyte okay now let's go and uh, look at this option in the other storage account which we just created so on this premium option you can see that uh, it is giving us only data storage option as file share whereas in the other cases we were seeing containers file share table queues all the different things but this one was purpose built for file storage so if you want to do that you can select the account kind as file storage if you want to purpose built this you can always go for uh, the specific account kind okay so this option is there okay generally people uh, if they want to have uh, file share they will go and uh, create the account itself as a file storage option and uh, they go and use it and if i go to the configuration items here as i told you you can you will never uh, able to change the performance okay so at the time of creation you need to decide whether you want uh, standard or uh, premium and by default the secure transfer is always enabled and uh, okay so let's talk about the security shortly but other than that okay there is nothing much now i'll show you how to go and create a file share okay let me uh, create a name i will say this is uh, uh, azure with stan file share one okay i can give it a name for the file share so minimum share size is always 100 gb this is the uh, challenging part with the uh, file share in premium premium concept okay so you have to include this stuff in the design document because customers will raise question uh, so uh, i mean because they are looking for premium category definitely the minimum starting size itself is high okay so that that is something which you need to capture it in your design document so that customer doesn't get surprised after their billing okay so let's go and uh, if you want to set it to maximum you can also set it to maximum but i will uh, just limit it to maybe let's uh, let me try to enter like 50 so it will say always minimum 100 okay so minimum is 100 and you can go up to uh, 1000 tb okay so i'll just say 100 that is the minimum that is supported in premium and uh, there are two options as i told you you can either support it can either support server message block for windows if it is for linux it supports uh, nfs if your client systems are windows you can enable smb option if your client systems are nfs you have to en enable nfs option so let's see the smb option i'll say smb here so i'll say stan smb file share one and i'll create it okay so once after i create it similar to your blobs yesterday you can go and upload the files you can create additional folders within that you can say uh, this is for our departmental purpose and you can go and create hierarchy within that and you will be able to add additional directories or you can structureize it as per uh, your official requirement you can go and create for finance you can go and create for hr you can go and create for different departments and you can store the respective data here and now let me go one step back and uh, show you something so within this azure file share i'll also go and create some home drive or home drives or home folder okay and here within that i can um, go and upload some contents okay i can also create some uh, specific directory for specific people so now i can just go and upload some files okay give me a second it is taking some time so i can just go and upload some files okay maybe uh, some happy face or uh, some kind of index okay so whatever you want to upload you can upload it you can upload multiple files also at the same time okay you can also upload some um, pages index.htm so you don't get option to select those category like yesterday only that is applicable for blob blob has three categories right block blob append blob and page blob but file share uh, there is no no such categorization but you can also change the tier at a later time for example if i want to uh, change the tier to uh, uh, what do you call uh, cold or a different category you can change it at a later time but there is no option to select uh, different types of uh, files it's only applicable for blocks blobs only okay only object type has got three categories page append and block block stand uh, Abhi yeah. here yes Ravi. Uh, uh, is there any restriction for uh, file types or is there any what is a uh, 
anti spyware malware kind of uh, mm -hmm. scanning done for viruses okay. for the files okay. that so, are uploaded yeah, this issues. is a managed uh, uh, file share right on at the operating system definitely microsoft anti malware is definitely installed and microsoft is managing the definition updates and uh, antivirus and all those things at their uh, operating system level okay this is a managed file share only we get option to go and create a file share on the server and we manage only at the file share level definitely the protection is there okay and uh, it is protected against cyber security threats it is uh, protected against vulnerabilities it is protected against viruses and all those things it is a managed file share microsoft definitely has uh, uh, stringent practice in place to protect against uh, those uh, vulnerabilities and also the viruses okay yeah so now you can also go and change the size and performance at a later time you can go and uh, increase the capacity if you want to increase it but uh, uh, you, you have the limitation okay you can only change only once uh, only one time every 24 hours but that is fine okay see uh, as long as you have the option you are not going to change uh, very often but if you can have some limitations there okay there are few limitations the first limitation i told you on the conversion right uh, in, in the Azure storage account, you cannot convert uh, somewhere. I mentioned it. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, you cannot convert from standard to premium and vice versa after creation. There are some limitation. That's fine. Okay. So uh, let let's do one thing. I have uploaded some files now. Let's see how to access that this particular file share. Okay. So I, I'll go to the file share here. I'll go to the file share and click on connect option. If I click on connect, it gives me option to connect from different client uh, machines. If you can um, connect it from Windows, the file shares can be accessed from Windows or uh, Linux or uh, Mac. Okay, it can be accessed from any operating system. So if you, if, it is, if you are accessing it from Windows, you can either use net command or you can use some PowerShell commands to mount it. Similarly, if you are accessing it from Linux, you can uh, copy this and uh, use this uh, make directory and you can use it for mounting using the CAFS type. So if it is Linux, uh, it will use the common internet file system type. If it is Windows, it will be using uh, the SMB uh, option to mount. And what is for Mac? I don't know, it is, what is the protocol? It is again SMB only, good. So if it is again um, Mac, it is SMB. So only important thing, SMB uses port 445. So that port has to be made sure that you have that open from the client to the uh, file share. Okay, it is mainly from the client location, not from the server side, it's mainly from the client location. Now, if I want to mount this particular file share on my machine, I can go and copy this PowerShell command, or I can also use command like net use or whatever you are, already used to okay so i can just copy this command now and you can you have to make sure that this particular uh, uh, 445 port is open and here if i want to use some different drive letter i can use different drive letter okay if i want to use something like stan or yes or something or if i want to use some different drive letter you can change it automatically the command will also change to mount the drive letter as yes so if you look at the powershell drive the name will be mounted as yes so it will automatically change whatever the changes you are making here the command, the PowerShell commandlet will also get updated. Okay, I'll copy this and I can log into any machine, either from your on premises or from the cloud. You can log in from any machine, go to PowerShell, and you can uh, execute that. The very first thing it is going to verify the connection to port 445. So it is verifying if, if the firewall doesn't uh, allow, it will uh, throw error. Okay, it is succeeded. So if it is succeeded, it is saying it is going to create a new powershell drive and it will have a drive letter yes and it will be mounting this particular unc path see for example uh, how you generally access file share you will go and create i mean access the file server name and you can you will access the folder path or folder name and you will be accessing it similarly you have got the uh, the server name of uh, azure file share and you have got the file share name here so that is the same thing okay i am going to mount it as a persistent drive even after reboot it will be persistent okay so let me enter it now it has entered and it has created now it has got mounted as s drive so if i want to switch to a s drive i can click on s drive 
and I can go and look at the directory listing. There are two folders departmental drive and home drive. And if I want to get inside home drive, I should always see the uh, stand folder. And within the stand folder, I should see those files which I uploaded the happy face and the index and all those things. So you can mount it from any machine uh, your uh, home machine I'm, I'm uh, from your uh, azure or your on premises so only thing is you'll have to make sure that the 445 port is open okay and you can access it from the explorer also it is not that you have to access it from the command line even if you go to your this pc you will also see the s drive here okay it is a network mounted drive so by default we have given 100 gb capacity right so you can store up to 100 gb and you can access it so if i want to create something here i can go and create it I can say uh, ravi.txt antivirus query. okay let me save it now i can just go and check it on the share here I can get inside here get inside home get inside stand and i should see that new file that i that, that was just created yeah ravi.txt oh it is taking double the extension okay sorry okay so it is able to we are able to see it um, okay so now the changes has got updated there is a thumbs db that gets created okay that, that when there is some modifications or something that's getting done it will create that that's fine but you are able to see it right so this is how you can mount it from any machines okay you can mount it from uh, windows linux or macbook and you can do simultaneous access to the file share so this is the way that you can uh, store some common application files or common or uh, departmental files or home folders whatever right there might be multiple use cases and you will be able to use it and just like your uh, blobs and virtual machine you also have the option to take a point in time snapshot so you know the point in time snapshot right yesterday also we saw that for blob you can go and create a point in time snapshot here what a snapshot snapshot is a point in time backup so it is like taking a photograph right so if you take a photograph today and if you are looking at after two years you will be able to look back and see like how you looked like uh, uh, the three years back or two years back or whatever right so that that's the snapshot that's the name also it is named a snap because it is capturing the current one minute guys it is capturing the current uh, state of the system or ca capturing the current state one minute i'm not three four five there is some issue with my keyboard one one minute yeah sorry so any questions so far from anyone before showing the snapshot option uh then yeah uh so you you talked about uh, the uh, SM, the the file share which we just created is uh, uh, the smb protocol right mm -hmm. but uh, still uh, we will be able to mount the file share in linux or unix based systems uh using sifs or no, uh, yeah, no, 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 no. So you have to create it as a in, uh, NFS mountable uh, file share. See, uh, when you created the file share, you had two options whether you want to yeah. have Windows based client or whether you want to have Linux based client. For Linux, the commands and uh, the option protocol itself should be different. You cannot uh, use it uh, like it's not a Samba sharing concept. It is a this is some people get confused with Samba and SMB. Samba is a different concept. If you are creating a Samba file share, you can use it from Windows and Linux together. But this is a proprietary Microsoft pro protocol SMB server message block and this is Linux proprietary in a network file system, right? So you have to create a file share that is nfs compliant so uh, uh, it will be accessed from a file share mount point you have to go to the etc uh, mount and get that mounted or you can also have a temporary mounting so it is like completely different option you cannot if you have created a smb share you, you I mean you can mount it from your uh, linux client okay that is possible uh, so okay okay your question was uh, whether i can mount it as a sif share right yes, yes you will be able to do that yeah then that's correct <laughs> Yeah, because uh, you mentioned for Windows, uh, we use the SMB, Mac, mm -hmm. SMB, and uh, 
correct, correct, correct. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, yeah, I was just recalling your question. Then I recall like, you asked about CAFS, not NFS, right? So yeah, CAFS is supported. Yeah, that is definitely supported. So for Linux, if you want to okay. mount the SMB file share, you have to have, I mean, you can use it, use it as a CAFS. Okay, and one more important okay. point. Yeah, go ahead. So we can uh, say uh, the file share which we are creating in the SMB that mm-hmm. can be mounted in both Windows and uh, Linux based systems as a Correct. mixed yeah, function, and, and, just like we do in our uh, on-prem storage, right? So, Correct. Yes. Okay. Yeah. If it is and, a just NFS, uh, uh, then it's it's uh, completely for the Linux and Unix. That's it. No, 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 no. See, even uh, oh. in your uh, Windows, uh, if you go to uh, your Windows system, I'll show you something. Uh, see if you go to uh, your uh, add or remove roles i remember there is an option to uh, even use that okay let me show, check that quickly so if you go here even there is an option where you can have uh, the client for nfs also just give me a second storage migration service storage migration proxy Okay, this is for uh, previous version. Message queuing client for NFS. So you can uh, even if you have a Linux based NFS file share, you can also mount it on Windows also. But you need to enable this feature. No, that is the uh, making the Windows server as a NFS server, right? So no, 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 this is the client for NFS. See, uh, this is this particular option is for enabling this computer to access files on a Unix-based NFS servers. Correct, but uh, uh, will that work for the Azure NFS file share as well? Yeah, yeah, it should work. It should work. See, after you okay. enable uh, NFS option, uh, you should be able to access those uh, NFS file shares from Windows also. Yeah, if if you have okay. enabled it on, right. on the client side. So similarly, okay. if, if you're accessing it from Windows, there is another point that you need to make sure. So uh, the cloud-based, the SMB file shares should have the client systems running on, uh, especially on the on-premises, it has to run on SMB version three. Otherwise there are a lot of challenges. Okay, so it should be uh, SMB version three. I think SMB version three is available from uh, Windows seven. Okay, so it is uh, there since very long time, but uh, it should be at least Windows 7. Some people will still use Windows XP or something or uh, even prior to that. So that will not be uh, supported. Windows From Windows 7, it's all uh, SMB version 3, right? So uh, either it should be Windows 7 or it should be either Windows 2012 uh, or even I think 2008 R2. Okay, minimum this, these are the two operating systems that is needed it can be above that it can be windows 8 windows 8.1 windows 10 windows 2016 windows 2019 or 2022 all these are supported so minimum that we, sh- we should have the client version or the smb client should be running on smb version 3. okay so that is one thing and now is there any restrictions on the nfs version also we have nfs 3 and nfs 4 uh, 3 and 4 right i think 3 is supported four. okay but it's always recommended to uh, have 4 uh, as a best practice but 3 is also supported yeah on the, on the cloud side see in the cloud even smb 2.1 is supported see for example if your machine is running on uh, uh, azure platform and even uh, smb older version is supported only for the uh, on-premises environment this is the limitation because it is coming through the vpn and uh, uh, coming through uh, the internet channel there are some challenges otherwise like if it is on uh, mount you are mounting from windows azure vm then even 2.1 is supported okay all right and uh, one more question yeah Stan. can i go ahead? yeah okay. go ahead go ahead please please you you said uh, um the file share can be accessed from uh, any system. The any means uh, it's, it's in public, right? So the, anybody mm-hmm. can access it. If I wanted to access it from the particular uh, uh, single network, from the particular VNet, will that be possible? Yeah, yeah. So definitely that is very, very important use case, right? You have to go to networking and you have to filter that 
traffic to specific selected network i want to access it only from the client range this is a very normal use case right for example you will have a range of systems from your on premises where only you need to allow access from that particular ip range or you want to access it only from uh, existing virtual network you can go and select the specific vnet for example i can just say i need to access only from the rg east us broad vnet and other vnet should not access it so you can either restrict it from cloud uh, azure vnet or you can restrict it from from a range that is very important right that's the right. common use case we have to do it yeah is it is it, uh, uh, is it can be done in the storage account level or it can be done at the file share level also okay at the file share level let me confirm i don't recall let me see here so we are in the file share okay and uh, Okay, SMB multi-channel security. So this is the protocol options. Okay, and TLM. I don't recall an option at the file share level. Okay, but let's see. No, I don't think so for now. Uh, okay, so what you can do? Well, let's see if there is any other option. Okay. No, I don't recall. But again, see, uh, at the end, uh, the storage account is the uh, data store level, right? And that is the protection level, where uh, you, if you are protecting it at the networking level, uh, you can do it. And yeah, you are right. If, if I'm using it for multiple purpose, then there are challenges, right? If I'm mixing uh, blobs and uh, file shares and other things, then uh, your design will be complicated. But yeah, if you are just purpose built for file share, then uh, ideally this, this doesn't make any uh, difference or it is not going to bring any kind of challenges. But for your question, yeah, you can uh, restrict the traffic from a selected uh, network or you can allow all the network or you can just allow from a specific machine also. And, and if you want to just only allow logs to be read, you can also enable read only option also. See, for example, if I'm storing some SAEM logs and if I want to give access to some third party for audit auditing or some uh, uh, specific use cases, you can also give access to uh, the logs from that particular specific network. So there are a lot of uh, use cases, but uh, these are all design related uh, thing, right? So, uh, I mean, uh, uh, asking question is fine, but yeah, though you have the option to do it. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Tim. No problem. Sure. Let's do one thing. I'll uh, show one more option. Okay. See, um, there are some interesting tools that are available. See, for example, if I go to, uh, uh the browser and if i say azure.microsoft.com slash downloads i'm not sure if i got deviated but anyways uh, I'll, I'll catch up with my uh, mind and i'll go back there but anyway so if you go to tools here you have uh, the storage explorer